Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Tuesday, August 31st, 2021. This is the Super Organizer Show with James Lott Jr. I am James Lott Jr., the Super Organizer, and welcome to the show. Yes, normally we're on Mondays, but today we're doing a Tuesday. Why? Because I can do that. Uh, we are here for a very special guest for me. I'm gonna, you're going to start seeing some different kinds of guests on my show. Yes, we've had all kinds on my show. We're going to see some of a different hue and coloring more because I did a, a talk to a bunch of Black professional organizers. So I'm going to be having them on the show the next upcoming months. So we're going to have a lot of fun talking to them so you guys get to know them and that I'm happy to see somebody who looks like me um, actually on the show. Uh, I've been doing the show six years, so I'm very happy to have these next guests coming up, especially my first of the series. Uh, she has an MBA, folks, so she's smart. Um, <laughs> and she is the owner of Project Move over in my home state of Pennsylvania, and her name is spelled differently than we say it, Devati Crawford. <laughs> well hey, up. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm happy you're here, too. Uh, okay. Uh, before I do this, you know, everybody knows I do my thanks and gratitude. I believe in giving thanks and living in gratitude. This is a little somber one. Um, so yesterday we lost a legend, or two days ago, well, we're recording this. Two days ago we lost a legend. Um, Nine-time Emmy winner, Ed Asner. Uh, he played, if you don't know who he is, I'll just tell you, but Mary Tyler Moore show, Lou Grant, yes. um, countless shows in the 70s and 80s, all the way up to uh, Cobra Kai. He was on last season of Cobra Kai. Also, he did the movie Up, which I cried, we made cry several times in that movie. He played the grandfather in that. He worked up until the time of his death. He was 91 years old. I had the pleasure of meeting him five years ago. And over the years, I've interviewed him three or four times. Uh, sat down with him, me and him, talking about life. He lived life to the fullest. He was an activist. Um, he was, he was a, he called himself, quote unquote, a shit starter. That was his words. Um, but he also was very compassionate. Uh, the Ed Astor Family House is out there. So it's a charity that, he, that they started. Uh, he was always supportive of my career and me. He was funny. He was cantankerous. He was a little raunchy. Uh, he was loving. And he, he gave me the best compliments about my interviewing skills, which I will hold, just will hold dear to me. And he was, and he was a true legend, I mean, a true television legend. So to his family who, and his son, who's, left, who's here behind, may you rest in paradise, Ed Asner. Say hello to Mary and, and Rhoda and everybody up, up there and Phyllis and everybody. Say hi to everybody. Um, you know, thank you very much for your for your community service to television. I just want to say that. Um, did you watch any of those shows? Did you watch Mary Time or Show or do you ever hear the radio that stuff? You know, I, I do. So I was like thinking about my own personal memories of watching those shows with my um, you know, with my family. And I, you know, sometimes they say that was the end of great TV. But I think that because they are still on TV, it's still going on. So I I um I commend you and I am a little jealous that you got to meet him. <laughs> yes, I wrote a, I wrote a tribute, it's online on on uh, on all my social media. I wrote a tribute to him and pay, posted the pictures. I, I lucked out. I mean, I'm in this was weird. I'm in the organizing business. Mm -hmm. I obviously have a job, I mean I have a company, I have clients, but I'm also <laughs> in Hollywood and have a media company. And so I'm lucky I get to experience both. And it's exciting. Um, and, then, and like you said, somebody you grew up with that you've watched on TV, I've had the pleasure of meeting many of my folks that I've enjoyed watching. I've been very fortunate. So that's my thanks and gratitude too for that, that I've been very, I lucked out. I lucked out I get to meet people like him and have real conversations off camera and on. We did what we did both. Um, well, we're, and, we're, luck we're lucky to meet you too. So don't think that we don't count ourselves lucky as well. <laughs> But you know, it's, it's, it's funny, Gerardi. It's What's funny for me is that I've been in business 12 years, so I guess I am a veteran. Uh, <laughs> yes, like, yes, you're considered yes, a am. veteran, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I never know what people think about me usually. I just kind of, I'm so just, I do. I just do, 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 do. I just do, I just, I just do and present and work really hard because that's what you do. You work really hard. Um, you know, we come from ancestry that worked hard. And that, <laughs> yes, you know, yes, we do. But we, we do. have to remember that, the gratitude that you extend to others, we extend to you as well, because you have paved the road for many of us. And some of us didn't even know that you were out there paving the road for us. But now that we know, we want to make sure that we give you your flowers as well. I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. And what she's saying, partly, is that I spoke to a group, which made me so happy, <laughs> of these beautiful, diverse uh, Black professional organizers. Um, and that's how I, extend, I extended an offer to them 
to come on my show, connect with me in many ways. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna be presenting at one of the meetings. So there's, 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 there's things coming up. Now we made a connection. And I know, I'm, you know, Roddy, I was out there. I mean, I was always out there, one of the few black folks in, mm-hmm. the, in the mainstream part of things. Um, and I was looking for black people. I literally, I mean, I have no shame in saying this. I was like, where are the black folks? Where are they? <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to tell you, you are not alone in that. Um, I've been in business since 2016 okay. and it, it felt like it was lonely out there. You're wondering, is anybody else that looks like me doing what I'm doing? Because it's always nice to be part of a community, to be connected to something that's bigger than you so that you can, you know, kind of like gain your strength, if that makes sense <laughs> from, from the community. So, so I appreciate that you were there because, you know, like you're going to give us opportunities and hopefully we can bless you with those same opportunities on the other side as well. Well, the thing is, you know, it's a village. It's the village mentality. My, my fans and followers know I talk about this all the time. Uh, I've been in business 14 years total for everything. Mm-hmm. I feel like the village, you lift each other up. You support Most each definitely. other. You Most spotlight definitely. someone in the village. You know, when someone's doing something, that's what you do. And I, fortunately, I've been lucky to be in the mainstream I worked very hard to get there. Um, and so if I can bring some of you with me, which is something that, I mean, you know, and I have to say this, but in our community, sometimes we don't do that. Um, I, I, no, we don't. But I think that if we can become the example, a lot of times like people just don't know how to do it. And, and so we need to make sure that we're providing an example so that we show other people that you can ascribe to those same things. So, well said. so thank you for that. No, well said. I like that. Well said. So I want to ask. I want to ask you. So how did you hear about professional organizing? Because you you have an MBA it's business, it's an older <laughs> thing over there. We all come from somewhere else. Like I didn't wake up and become an organizer either. Uh, but for you, how did you find about organizing? Um, I found organizing by accident. Um, you know, like when you work in corporate, sometimes you know transitions happen, and uh, yes. I had. <laughs> And I had the opportunity to be a, um, a part of one of those transitions. And it was an opportunity for me to sit that I, you know, that I was fortunate enough to be able to sit back and say, what, what do I want to do? And then I had some friends and family that reached out and said, you know, like you have some of these skills. Can you, you're not doing anything because it wasn't. <laughs> and um, they said, you know, we're merging households, I'm retiring, I'm moving can you just help us out? And I knew nothing about the industry. I didn't know how much to charge, what the industry even existed. And I was just out there doing it. I mean, I have a background in project management. And I think that is the skill that I bring to organizing that's a little bit unique because like you hear so many stories where people are like, I was lining up my dolls and I was making everything pretty. I was doing none of that. I was solving problems. That's what I do. (laughs) I solve problems. Mm -hmm. And so so we all come at it from a different perspective and we have to figure out what, you know, like what are we bringing to the community? And I bring that I solve problems. I, when people call me, they usually have a problem and it's, it's a combination of things, places, and, you know, and people. So you figure out how to do it. So so they had a problem. They had two households. I'm sure you've seen that before where two people are moving together. And the worst thing to do is take it all with you. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Oh. And, and people take it all with them. They and they somehow think that two couches is going to make the difference. So, right, exactly. You're like, Whoa. I'm like, of course, two couches will definitely fit in that living room. Yeah. And so, so it's really about finding finding that piece to the puzzle. So I really didn't even know to call it organizing initially. I really looked at it as project, you know, that's how I came up with the name project move because it was project management and people were moving. And so I wasn't, it wasn't that creative. It wasn't, I didn't think long and hard about it. I didn't even know if it would be permanent. I just knew it was something I was doing, doing at that period of time. And what I found is that there is a, there's a problem. And, you know, you learn this from business school. If there's a problem and you can identify a solution, then people will pay you over and over to get it done. And so, so that's why this field is so interesting because it's so diverse. You can sit at so many different spectrums in the organizing field, but it's important to clearly identify what your niche is. 
because otherwise you're kind of like floating all over the place. And sometimes that's hard too, if, if you're trying to d- develop and build a, a successful business. Yeah, no, it's true. This, this, this industry is far and wide. It, it can range, <laughs> yeah. it, no, seriously, it can range from helping entrepreneurs and a, a startup to helping moms with small children. It can be yes. from, um, like for me, I, my, my specialty is uh, change of life, older people. Mm-hmm. I do a lot of, you know, retirement, um, widowhood, divorce, you know, there's, I mean, like you said, things where you're paring down a lot of times, downsizing, mm-hmm. adult children leaving home, like, there's a lot of that going on. So I mean, that's, but there's, but you have that stuff. Then you also have young moms, or you have businesses, <laughs> or you have, yeah. you know, I did, I did, I did talk on, on gardening organization. I mean, it's like, there's, there's yes. so many things you can, I mean, it's, yes. it, really, it really is a great thing. I mean, you're right. So you have to, it's a broad business. It's not just, it's not just closets and bathrooms. It's, it's not. Yeah. And, and, and that's what makes it so much, it, it makes it fun, but it also makes it difficult because then people really don't understand what you do because they see so many pretty pictures on Pinterest and all the boards and they're like, Oh, can you make it look just like this? And, and I say, well, that's really not my specialty. And they go, you're an organizer though. So you know, so it, it goes, you know, like the path is just, it's an interesting path, but you have to, I, I think it's an opportunity for us that have some of the business background to educate some of the people who are starting in the industry to say, figure out what you really want to do, find your passion, and then and then use that skill to really develop a successful business. You do not have to be everything to everybody because it will exhaust you and you won't be an expert in anything. And I will say this, and this is she's and what she's saying, listen to her, what she's saying is true. The problem is I know for a lot of people when they first start out, you want to make money. Yes. So yes. Think- and, and 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 okay, so I digress. So when you first open an organizer business, I say do every type of project you can do. And okay. the reason is so that you can figure out what you like. Okay. Like how okay. do you know what you do? like? I, I mean, I remember growing up, and my mom used to tell me this. She was like, take the job because then you will know what you don't want to do specifically. Mm-hmm. As opposed to saying, I don't like that. I don't like that. Because what you'll find is that there, there are things that you've just never done that you could absolutely love. True. And because the field is so diverse, take the variety of jobs. But the caution is, is that how do you advertise yourself if you say I can do everything? Yeah, yeah. So you have to find some path to go on. Yeah. And then then you can explore from that path. I mean, like there are things that I know that I don't love. I mean, I still have the skill set to do them, but I won't advertise that I can make you a Pinterest pantry. Like I'm never going to advertise that on my Facebook page. You're never going to see before and after pictures of me posting a pantry. Not that I can't give you a functional pantry. It's just that I don't want you to call me first. Because there's so many people who are doing excellent work in that space. I would prefer that you work with them because they're going to be more efficient. They're going to be able to answer your questions more specifically. Now, if you're about to move, calling the person that does pantries all the time may not be your best bet because then they don't understand all the details that go into a specific move. And so, so that's where being in a community really helps because you don't, you're not afraid to refer them to, you should call such and such because yeah, she's yeah. the pantry expert. And so that's why being in a community is so helpful. I am um, out here, at least so big. Um, there are parts that, like, I don't go to. I'm like, I don't, that's too far for me. Um, <laughs> but bad, bad people who are do do, I pass them on to them. Exactly. Say, you know, just notice they just pass on to somebody else. But no, I'm saying you bring up a good point because that's the whole point is that you want, you come and go, I'm in business, I got to make money. So you take everything. But at some point, it's just it's what she said both times. And in the middle of that, you start to pare down mm-hmm. what you don't want to do anymore because you can say no. Yeah. And I know it's hard sometimes. <laughs> oh, it's it so hard. It's so hard because, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I guess because we when you grow up in the South, I grew up in Virginia, they're probably like, we have so many like, colloquial sayings that we'll say when they go all money ain't good money right yes, so, <laughs> yes, yes. I know that one. so so you have to be careful because you get excited because somebody's going to pay you but you also have to remember that every online referral and recommendation is going to follow you 
So if there is something that you don't do 100% well, that you feel like you're going to excel in, that referral could prevent you from your target customer actually saying, yes, I'm going to choose you. And they could be completely different, right. but they're just, read, they're just reading what your profile says. And so, so I, I agree. Did I take jobs that I probably shouldn't have taken? Yes. I, I'm sure you can say the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but as you get, as you're in the business a little bit longer, you'll understand that um, I, I, I mean, I do business, you know, like I've had a business coach. And one of the things she said was that you keep taking these things that are not profitable, that are just using your time. So when a profitable job arrives, you're booked. You're booked. And you can't, and you can't not do that job. So, so you have to, you have to figure out how do I, how do I balance that? And, and that's, that's something that, you know, like being in business is, is like more than just you're a great organizer. Yes. It's a business. I mean, business. I, I mean, it sounds so simplistic as we're saying that, but there are a lot of organizers I tell them that I've mentored. Do you think of it as a business? This is not mm -hmm. a hobby, right? This is a mm -hmm. business. It's so you got to think that way. And, and you're in charge. So of everything. Of everything. Of everything. There's, everything. Nothing, there's nothing that you're not in charge of. Right. So, it's up, so I'm saying it's up to you to yes. make your business how you want it. Yes. I mean, you can form it and shape it and make it however you want. That's which, the is, which is so cool. If you think about it as an organizer, um, using those same skills that you use in a client's home, you're able to shape a business. And a lot of times we don't, we don't use our own skills to develop ourselves, but those are the same skills that you're developing a space that you could use to develop your business. Amen. And bye. Have a good day. See you later. No, no, she, <laughs> no she's booked it. She's that's the bell. She gets the bell. Um, no, no, it's true. It's the truth. I mean, I, we we're very for we can do that. I think that's what's really interesting. Um, but you're in charge, folks. You're in charge. Yes. It's your thing. You can frame it however you want to. But we're, what we're trying to say to you, basically, anybody who's new at this. Uh, who watches the show, it's that you can do it, but you try some stuff, but then figure out what you really want to do because it's up to you. I mean, I mean, what kind of clients you want? Because here's the problem that can happen. Well, okay, so yeah. You're setting the tone from the very beginning mm -hmm. with clientele mm -hmm. of what you will do or will not do, mm -hmm. what you are, what you're not. Mm -hmm. And when you go against that, you're going against yourself which is always bad, but also you're, you're sending a message out to people saying, well, they'll do this because they, 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 they'll they clean too. I tell mm -hmm. you, well, I'm not a handyman. Don't ask me to put up a shelf <laughs> or ask me to put together a cabinet. I, James Law Jr. don't do that. I, I can find you somebody who can do that. I don't do that. I am a person, I don't do moves. I said, what I do is uh, I help you prepare the move. Mm -hmm. I'll help you after you move in. I don't do moving day. No, we don't do that. And that was after a while of me having done that and realizing mm -hmm. I don't want to do that. Exactly. Exactly. And, and, and for me as well, it's, it's understanding like who your partners are, like who, who fits along your supply chain so that, so that you understand the type of work that you do. So, so for me, like I don't move furniture. Like, I mean, I think I might move a side table if it's in the wrong place. Right, right, but, right, exactly, right, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, like, I'm not coming in here to help you move your sofa. No. I'm not here to, I'm, I mean, like I can go down the list of what I'm not here for, but what I am here for is to, to, to make sure that I can help you to relieve the stress and make sure you have the resources in order to be successful. And yeah. so, so really understanding what your role is and how, and where you want to play. I mean, like I've had organizers tell me, I'm not going to have them call anybody else because I can do it all. And I say more power. To yeah. You. Yeah, no, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like, if that's the model that you want, then by all means, it works for you. But, but, you know, like me putting, you know, me trying to mount shelves on the wall, I, I, I don't even do it in my own house. Hello, me too. Oh, me so too. I mean, so, so like you're asking, like, so when some people ask me to do things, like when you say, I don't do cleaning. And they're like, well, I mean, I do broom sweat cleaning. So oh, I will me, tell oh, you. Me too. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So I do broom sweat cleaning. But they're like broom sweat cleaning means that once everything is gone, I pretty much vacuum. 
Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and so, and they're like, well, you know, if, if you could do a little bit of, um, I was just like, you know, that little bit of, um, I actually hire someone to come to my own house to do this. Thank you. Thank you. So, so that little bit of, um, so, so yeah, you have to set the tone because the, the challenge is, is that the person that you give a deal to, that you do this extra for, what happens if they're your best person that's referring the most clients? Yep. So then you end up with a business that you didn't want or didn't exactly. create. Exactly. And, and, that's, and that's really, that can really be a challenge for you because you end up doing things that you know don't fit what you're supposed to be doing, but you're like, I'm going to say yes, because, you know, like I'm here. Right. And and then we've all been burned by that. Yeah, we have. Oh, we have. I yeah, I when I first started I with the cleaning thing, I did advertise as a cleaner at first because I can clean. Because not all housekeepers can organize and organizers can be housekeepers. It's just not just not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I can do both. And but at some point you Superman, like, go Superman. Uh, <laughs> no, like something like that. But I was kinda like but after a while, I was kinda like, I don't want to do both. Mm-hmm. I don't I know folks who are really good cleaners, they're really good, they can deep clean mm-hmm. nicely. So it's like, so then there's times when I would refer them and then I would come and organize, they would come the next day and clean. Mm-hmm. So then by that Friday, the house was perfect for, you know, for the client. So yeah. we work things out, like you work, you work it out. You just work out your resource. But I'm like, no, I learned after a while, that service is done. We are not doing it anymore. I don't want to do it. I don't clean my own house. People come to my house. I don't want to do it anymore. So I'm, I have that luxury. So for you guys, you have to stand your ground. And I've, yeah. I've, I've had to fire a few clients in my life. It's not fun. Um, yeah. And and I will admit I've been fired from a few clients yeah, <laughs> as well. Right, right. So I mean, so it, it it works both ways. Like I'm in my contract, it says there's a line that says, you know, maybe we are not the best match. And you know, we can both terminate, you know, both people can terminate the agreement because we don't know, like like the thing about working in organization is that you uncover so much about people's lives. So when I do my consults, I'll tell people. I'm going to be all up in your business. So just be ready. Right. And they're like, well, what do you mean? I said, because if I'm unpacking your stuff, I'm going to see everything you own. If I'm packing your stuff, I'm going to see everything, everything you own. If I'm helping you to get rid of stuff, I'm going to see everything that you own. So there's really no hiding from the organizer. And so it's very important that you develop a relationship with the clients that you feel comfortable being yourself and they feel comfortable being their self. So that's a that's a skill that you'll develop as you talk to more clients, but you want to make sure that you can bring, you know, that whole saying, I bring my whole self to work. As an organizer, there's no such thing as not bringing your whole self to work because if they can't t- stand your temperament, then it's going to be miserable. And the worst thing is to be in business and to have to go to someone's house that you don't want to go to when it's your business and you could have said no. Yes. That's the worst. Yes, it is the worst. I've had that back in the day, not anymore, but I've had that. Yes, every, as you grew into figuring out exactly what you wanted. Exactly. Every every client that I have now, I love to pieces. Um, <clears throat> I'm excited to go to their places. Exactly. You're um, like excited to see what's happening next and what's going on. Exactly. And they're excited to see you. Like they're they're like, okay, what day are we getting together? That's the relationship that you want. I mean, like when, when I mean when I worked in corporate. I'm not going to say every day I was jumping in the car to get to work. <laughs> I know I wasn't. I'll tell you that. I know I wasn't. So, so when you are in business for yourself, why would you not want to be jumping in the car, excited to go to work? So, yeah, I agree with that completely. Yeah. It's, it's, um, being an entrepreneur is a very interesting thing. And basically we've talked about the business side of this. Cause that's basically what it is. And project move is celebrating five years, right? It's five years. Yes, yes. So we're That's very right. excited. Um, so we've been the first couple of years, we were just part time, okay. um, just trying to fill it out because most businesses are part time when they start. Yes. Um, sure. It's funny because 2019 was the first year that we were full time. We were so excited. We made a profit. Oh. We were so excited. And then we went to COVID and that Thank was like, it. and, and you kind of like you saw it happening and then you were like, okay. Am I still in business? But what I did during that time was actually I got a business coach. Okay. And I I wanted to figure out this was the time, <laughs> like if, if I look at my timeline of what's going on with the business, this was the time when I started saying, is this a business or is this a hobby? 
Okay. Am I like, who are my ideal clients? You know, like all that stuff I learned in business school, because, you know, sometimes the stuff you learn in school is it's good stuff. Yeah, so it is. So it, is. <laughs> it is good stuff. And I, kept thinking, sometimes. Yeah. and I kept thinking, who's my ideal client? Who do I want to work with? What, you know, like how much money can I make? What skills don't I have to be in the business part of this organization skill? And that's when I started looking for organizations that I could be affiliated with. Because even though you are a solo entrepreneur, the idea of doing anything solo is naive. Yeah. And so I was looking for connections and something so that I could hear about what other people were doing. So I could see how like all the skills, like to be a, a business owner, what are you? Finance, HR, operations, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> And you wanted to hear what other people were doing. So I started joining Facebook groups of um, organizer groups. I started, um, I, I mean, I just was like, okay, I, at that point, there were no clients. <laughs> so it was just like, I was just craving information to try to figure out, you know, how can, how, what does this really look like? Are people really making this a, you know, like a six figure, seven figure business? Is this something is that something that's in my path? You know, how yeah. can I, you know, how can I make that happen? You know, I hired a marketing company to do the website because I realized that yes, I can do my own website. I just don't think it was very smart because when they looked at what I created, they were like, we have a lot of opportunity for improvement. <laughs> okay. So, so, I mean, so it's like figuring out what to spend your money on as a business owner, as okay. well as to figure out, you know, like what you're doing. Like I did not have this specialty of moving because I was like, I could be anything to everybody, I, you know, cause I was like, I need to make money. Mm -hmm. And, and so, you know, I didn't have the pricing, right. I didn't have a target. I, I mean, it was just, it was just, I was out there just saying, if you need organizing, call me. That's basically what the sign said. If you need organizing, call me. Right. And, and what the interesting thing is that I don't think the majority of the world understands what pro organizers are. They don't. They don't. I can tell you they don't. I can tell you right now they don't. And since they have no idea who we are, me wearing a shirt that says I can help organize you means absolutely nothing to them. Yes. And so, so then I was like, well, what am I supposed to say on social media? You know, like, what am I supposed to do? And, and, you know, we go down the path of hundreds of before and after pictures. And I made the choice with my marketing company that we, we are not doing before and after pictures because they said, I don't know if it was a good decision, a bad decision, but I, I, I kind of, like, I kind of came in it with this, this mindset. So, you know, I was in prayer. I'm like, God, you know, what's going on? And one of the things he said was, what if I put your before picture oh, on yeah. social media? Yeah. And I said, huh. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, hmm, I do very little also. I do very little of that too. And so, uh, so you kind of have to find your, you have to find your voice. And, and because I made that decision, I, I realized finding my voice is a little bit more difficult because, because people are, people look at those things. I mean, I've had clients, that, you know, potential clients that say, well, I need before and after pictures. Right. And I say, and I say, but, but why? And they're like, well, I want to see what it could look like. And I said, but your space looks nothing like this after picture. Right. So, right. so it's, it's just like, you have to find, you have to find your voice, you know, like in this, in this particular field. And so, so we're, you know, we're going down that path and, you know, we're developing some things. I, I, you know, I was nervous before this call. So I had a call with my marketing people <laughs> good. And, and we were talking because they said, this is what I said. I said, you know, after me making this, this first step, I call this my first podcast, not my last, <laughs> I call it my first. Yes. And, um, I said, more people are going to look for you. Mm -hmm. And so, so we were like, we need to figure out what message or what do we want to communicate to people? Like, who are we trying to be? Yeah. And so, so, you know, so we came up with a plan um, so we're, we're going to tell that to get that going, but we're excited that, that we can be a voice in that space of moving because lots of people have a ton of questions Yes, and, and people are overwhelmed with the task of moving and, and 
that particular point. And so, so I'm going to focus on just moving. I yep. even came up with an acronym. What's the acronym? Tell me. Okay. So the M is for motivation. What's your why for getting, for making this particular change? The O is for your organizational opportunities. Like what, what are we going to do? The V is for visions and values to make sure that we're aligned with mine as well as yours. The I is for who's involved in this particular move. Like what should we be doing? The N is for you're in your now, but we know you want to get to your next. And the G is for growth because through any change in life, we have the opportunity to grow, to be better, to be who we want to be. I like that. You're just thinking of acronyms, folks. I ain't, I ain't done that. What you think of acronyms? <laughs> okay, girl. And that's, and that's the great, and that's so, such a great thing. She has her approach. I have mine. And there are hundreds of others have their approaches. Um, that's the point. It's finding your approach of how you want to run your business. Because you're right, you have to figure out a way to speak to people. Um, I know for me, a lot of times, it's me. I'm, I'm, I'm the product. I've, I had learned after a while. It's my upbeat, positive, no-nonsense attitude. Meaning, I'll come in your house. I always have my things. I'm trustworthy. Mm -hmm. I'm discreet. I'm upbeat, positive. Mm -hmm. So that's my, that's my message. No matter what mm -hmm. it is we're going to do, I'll come in your house. Yeah, I see some stuff I shouldn't see. But that's just life. I mean, we see things all the time. We're in your space. It's all apples. And, it's all oh, the apples. It's all elbows and knees to me anyway. So it's at this point. It's like whatever. But I'm here to be discreet, trustworthy, non-judgmental. I have that in my thing too, non-judgmental uh, and upbeat. And that's what mm -hmm. I, so I make sure all my messages are out there instead of showing before and after pics. I'm like you, I have very little out there. Very little. Well, and yeah, I mean, because because if you're priding yourself on being discreet, having somebody's before, picture, yeah, hello. it kind of like screams the opposite of discreet. Hello, yes. And and I realize I may never know whose house it was or who house right. it is. I it, it's just me, and yeah. that's a that's a personal choice, and I have to live with that personal choice for the business. Even though you know, no matter how many people say, "Well, Javadi, if you had some before and after pictures." And I'm like, if I had, like most of my before and after pictures, like with moving is the house is full, the house I'm is empty. empty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so the only before, I mean, like I, I do take, um, like sometimes I'll take candid shots while I'm at clients' houses, but that's just me sitting in the middle of it. And so yeah. the picture is really about me sitting yeah. in the middle, you yeah. know, sitting in the middle, letting you know that I will get in the middle of your stuff. And be okay with that. But it's not about showing you what they had or what they didn't have because people are very anxious to see. I, I think it's kind of like part of our voyeuristic nature. Yeah. yeah. So now here's your chance to tell people, oh, you've been great. You, you, have, you have to come back on. You have to come back on. I feel like this conversation is about the business side of organizing, which is very important. So yes. we're going to leave, leave it here. I think it's going to be good. Yes. But come on again. We'll talk some other stuff. But I just, wanna, I just want you to tell people, where they can find you in your business if they want, because I know you're at projectmovelv.com. I know that part. Yes. But any yes. other, anything, are you on social media? Anything? Tell people where you can find you. Yes, you can find me on LinkedIn. I have a LinkedIn profile yes. because depending on, um, and and James just connected with me, so you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, it's under Javadi Crawford. And you can find me on Instagram. We are building out our Instagram site, so we're going to be more robust than we are right now. But it's it's um, at move underscore curator is our handle on Instagram because I believe that I can curate anybody's move. <laughs> And so look, look for us, um, join us, um, but do know that this is a business. And if you have questions about anything, I tell people that we help you get moving so that you can get to your next destination. I like that. Thanks for being on the show. Thank, Thank you. you. You're a delight. Um, and I, you find me where all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. at all social media platforms. The super organizers are everywhere. A lot of help.com, the SOS uh, underscore show on Twitter, uh, Super Organizer Show on Facebook. I uh, have mugs. I have all kind of goodies. Um, just check check me out and check out all my wonderful organizers that I am uh, featuring. And we'll give a shout out to the organization that we actually connected to. Tell them yes. what the organization is. Tell them. Um, it's the National Association of Black Professional Organizers. And it's it's the website is www.nabpo.org. Not .com, because I mess that up all the time. It doesn't exist, .org. And 
We've just updated our website so you can do a search on there and you can find people that may be in your state or be um, looking for a specific specialty. So look us up. We're out there. We're getting larger and we are excited to serve you because we that's what we do. We serve our customers. Support. Support Black business. Yes. Black organizers. Thank you. Here. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. It's my pleasure. Everyone, please have compassion. Take care of yourselves. Get organized. And we'll see you next time. Bye.